Okay, so Google has changed coding forever. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, one of the advantages of large language models is that they're very good at writing code. Now, it, they can handle C, C++, C Sharp, Rust, Java, Go, JavaScript, you know, a lot of languages, and they're, they're pretty good at it. Now, one way to use them is that you kind of just go over to your chat application and you say, write me a piece of code that will do this, and you cut and paste it and so on. A more elegant solution is when it's integrated directly into your development tools, specifically into the editor, into the integrated development environment. That means from within inside the editor, within inside the IDE, you can interact with the large language model and get help writing your code. Now, there are plenty of these systems around. I'll name just a few. You've got GitHub Copilot, you've got Cursor, you've got Replit, you've got Windsurf, and there are many, many others. And Google also has one called Gemini Code Assist. Now, the big change is this. Most of these products require you to pay a monthly subscription. Now, there is normally a free tier that kind of gives you just enough to get you going, but you can run out of resources, out of quota, but it's enough to kind of make you say, oh, I'll go and pay for the real thing. And Google were exactly the same. But now they've just announced that they're basically increasing those limits. Uh, it's not limitless, but it's basically so high that you're never going to hit those limits. For example, I was doing a quick bit of calculations, and if every day for a month you coded eight hours straight without any pauses, then you could do 10 code completions uh, every minute, and you can use a prompt to write code every two minutes, eight hours for a whole month, and you would not hit the limit. So basically, in true, in practical senses, it's, it's limitless. Now, I mentioned two things there, prompts and code completion. The way it works inside of Gemini Code Assist and in many of the other platforms is as you're typing the code, the large language model recognizes what you're doing and it offers some more code, not just a few uh, symbols, not just a variable name or something like you get inside of a an advanced uh, text editor or a code editor, but actually whole lines of coding. It's, oh, I see what you're doing. You want, and then it gives you, that's called code completion. And the other thing is you can interact inside of the uh, file. You can say, well, take this function here and then refactor it or, you know, add this piece of functionality or add this parameter. And it knows the code you're working on. And you can use a prompt together with your code to actually get yourself uh, further along in your development. Now, it's just worth mentioning at this point, this is not the same as vibe coding. Vibe coding is this idea that uh, someone who has little development experience can rely almost completely on a large language model to create code, show them how to run it, uh, actually get it up and running and playing, particularly if it's like JavaScript or something, just get it up and running in a browser and you've got Tetris, you've got Worm, whatever it is that you're trying to play. Now, with uh, Code Assistant, you're the one that's doing the coding. You're the one that knows where it is you're going. You've got a plan. You're, you've done the software development part, the software engineering part, but you want some help Help with some coding. So in this video, I'm going to show you Gemini Code Assist, show you how to install it, and show you how it works when we're going to write some simple C code and see the interactions that we get. Okay, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, here we are inside of Visual Studio installing the Gemini Code Assist extension. It's really easy. You go over and click on those little boxes there, bring up the extensions, just start to type in Gemini Code Assist. It will come up in the list. Scroll down the list and uh, click on it when you see it there. Then you've got to do is click on Install. Do you trust Google? Well, that's not a philosophical question, but yes, in this case, we want to install this. So we go ahead and do that, and it will just download and install that extension uh, inside of Visual Studio Code. Getting up and running is easy. Now you've got this little Gemini Code Assist uh, sort of Gemini symbol there on the left-hand side. You click on sign in with Google. That'll open up a web page in your web browser. You go through the normal sign in procedure. It then reports back here to VS Code uh, after it's logged in. And uh, you basically, that's it. It's a pretty simple uh, one step process, really. Now your VS Code is connected to your Google account, which means it's connected to Gemini's large language model for using for uh, AI Assistant encoding. OK, so let's say I wanted to create a, a string library in C. I'm always using strings. and I want my own little library that deals with all the memory allocation, all that stuff. So here I am inside of Visual Code. As we've previously done, we've installed 
uh, the Gemini code assistant. Now I've already started uh, one file here. Well, basically I've worked out that I'm gonna need uh, a way of creating a new string in my string library. It's called stringy. And I've also got uh, a header file, which I've defined the type uh, def, the structure for what I need for my string, where it's got the data, it's got its length, and it's got its current capacity. And I've also got here the, the forward or prototype for that string new function that I'm putting in here. And now I'm thinking, well, actually, it'd be good if the kind of I could have some help. I could just start typing all this out. So let's start by doing that. We can, uh, we can for example, go with uh, Control I, and we can say uh, Generate. Generate, and then we can, uh, let's try this, Stringy New. So I'm asking it to go ahead and create that code for me rather than me going to do it. So it's come up with a diff window here, stringy new, and it's gone through the code. Well, we'll just accept it for the moment and then we're gonna have a look at it. So what is it doing? It's saying basically, uh, if if it hasn't, uh, it sets the length to zero, it gets the initial capacity, which we know is defined here. So it already starts with 16 long strings, allocates the memory, uh, adds a zero to it, uh, and then it basically makes sure that the uh, new string that we're initializing it with, there's enough space. If it's more than 16, it's gonna to need to reallocate it, free up the old stuff and so on. Okay, so there is the function to do that. Now, note, I've noticed this a couple of times. It Look, it's got this with the brackets wrong there because that was there. I'm gonna to have to go down here and, and put that in there. Okay, another way to do it is, there you go, is you get this thing called completion. So this is not a completion from inside of VS Code, they're different, but it's given me here string free, so I'm gonna accept that. So string free is also a function that I would need and it knows I need that. What I mean it's different than the uh, the um, the VS Code one. Well, if I do str here, you can see this menu coming up here is the one from inside of VS Code because it's code aware. Okay, that's different to the um, the completions that are coming from Gemini, from Google. Okay, so there you go. I've now got a create a string and a, a free a string. So I could now do something like this. I could uh, create a new file and we could call it main.c. Uh, and I could say it says press control I to ask Gemini to help you code. Okay, so we'll press control I, uh, generate, generate some test code code to test stringy functions. Okay, so hopefully that will now go in here and create a small program that, uh, let's accept all of those, let's see what it's done. Okay, stringy new hello, you print it out. It does, a, does another one, uh, prints it out. This is a longer string test capacity printed out, okay? It's done it with a null string as well. So there you go, a few test cases to see that our new string works uh, and that it, and also the free string works and that it can print them out. Brilliant. Okay, but the problem is now is I've got no way to save this. I've got no way to compile this. So another way to do is we can go over to this Gemini here and get a prompt down here, okay? And we can ask Gemini, create a make file for this project. Uh, build stringy as a library and link main against the library. Okay, I'm asking for a make file. So hopefully that will understand uh, what I'm looking for. We can always tweak it. We can always ask it to tweak it. So that's gonna go ahead and uh, generate that code. Okay, so there's the make file and uh, we'll copy that, we'll go into my file explorer here, we'll create a new file called make file and we'll cut and paste that into there. Okay, what I'm just gonna do now is bring up a terminal and we're gonna type make, let's see what happens. Okay, so that's fine. So the make file has worked, but it's pointing out that there is a, there is a problem. So I, I wonder if we can just cut and paste this like that and just stick it into Gemini and see what it does. Now what I know that is a stringy free is not defined in stringy dot h. That's the problem. So uh, let's see whether it can it can work that out for me. There you go. It's come into stringy dot h. Let's go over to stringy dot h. What we just need is stringy free. If we go back down here to our make file, we can type make. Uh, well, let's do make clean because that was probably only a warning. Okay, and now we'll run the main program. Okay, so it's in the bin directory. 
so we just run stringy test uh, hello length 5 capacity 16 a null string has got 0 but it's capacity of 16 this is a longer string it's got a length of 40 and the current capacity is up to 41 so there you go that proved our little string uh, thing was working so if we wanted to write some code now let's say we wanted to do it let's say we wanted to write um, uh, a, 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 a duplicate function so we just call it copy uh, so we call it stringy copy okay and the input is a stringy string correct okay and then this is where you sometimes you hope I wonder if there's going to be a code completion well we're going to say return um, and there you go it's worked out stringy new and then you want a new string based on the data that was in the past in string. And that's correct. Again, we're going to watch out for these curly brackets. It doesn't seem to be getting that right all the time. And so that's okay. And now we can go back here to main and we can say um, uh, generate code to test stringy copy. Okay, so again, I could go in there and do that myself, but we can say, hey, yeah, you, you do it. And so what's it going? Stringy number four, copy me. Okay, and then original string, copy string. Okay, so, and then it frees them both up at the end. So great, so we can, we should be able to save all of those and just do a make now. Okay, stringy copy is not defined in the header file. We knew that was going to be a problem. So let's just cut and paste the... Um, the errors into here. Let's get it to fix that for us. The point I'm trying to make is this is a coding assistant. This is, as I said earlier on, this is different to vibe coding. Okay, it's me wanting to do some coding, but I'm I'm looking for some help in doing that as I as I go along. So in here now, I'm going to say open in a file. Okay, I know that we want stringy copy. Okay, add this line. That's exactly what I want to do. So we're going to go into here and just add that line like that. Okay, let's see what happens with make, make clean, make. It works. So it was a stringy test. Here we go, original string, copy me, length 8, capacity 16, copy me, length 8, 16. So there you go. So as I say, this is about uh, AI assistant helping you do the coding. So I'm now being able to write, uh, you know, 50 lines of code. I've got a make file. I've got another 40 lines of code for testing it. So, you know, I, I'm starting to write that and I'm doing it myself i'm in the driving seat i know what i want to write i know what functions i want but i'm getting the ai to help me do it so i write it quicker it's an assistant that's the the bottom line and as i said the point is now this is free i signed in with my google account and i've got basically more completions and prompts than i'm ever going to need in a normal coding session during a day Okay, so there you have it, Gemini Code Assist. As I said, there are other services out there, Cursor, Windsurf, and all the other ones uh, I've mentioned, but this is now basically free. You sign in with your Gmail account, which you've already done probably with YouTube and with your Android phone. As I say, your Gmail account, you sign in with your Gmail account and you've got free AI assistance for your coding. Now, one little thing to notice, of course, is if you were doing this in a place of work, you probably shouldn't and couldn't do that because you don't want proprietary code that belongs to the company being sent over to Google only if your company has signed up for that and whatever policies they've got in place. But for you doing your private personal projects, this is certainly the way to go. It'll be interesting to see how the other services respond to this uh, in the future. I have to watch this space. Okay, love to hear your thoughts about all this in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.